Hi, Derek. I am Wise at Math tutor Joseph Burke, and I'm going to be answering your question. I'm also going to be sharing my screen so that you can see what I see, specifically so that you can see me using the equation editor. So in this problem, they ask us to find the sine of u minus v. They don't tell us what u minus v is. What they do tell us is that the sine of u is 12 over 13, and the cosine of v is negative 8 over 17. And another essential piece of information is that both of these angles are in quadrant 2. So in order to solve this problem, at some point in this problem, you're going to have to solve for the sine of v and the cosine of u. Now this is not the two this is not the two angles the two trig function values that they gave us. What we're talking about here is the cosine of u which I'm going to have to assume you know how to do for the sake of brevity. And the cosine of u you can calculate from the sine of u and knowing that u is in quadrant 2 is turns out to be negative 5 over 13. And once again, from the information, we can calculate that the sine of v is equal to 15 over 17. And both of these are important pieces of information you will need to calculate. If you don't know how to do this, that's another video we could make. Just ask. And there are a few ways we can solve these problems, but the intention of the question above is usually to help students learn to apply what is sometimes called the composite argument property. Probably should have done some capitalization somewhere in there, but that's all right. And it's sometimes called the sum and difference formula. And I'm going to go with the sum and difference formula because I think it's easier to remember. So there are a number of sum and difference formulas that you'll want to learn. But since we're talking about the sign of a difference between two angles, u and v, um, we're going to be using the following. I'm just going to paste that right in. There it is. This is a formula you will want to memorize. Now you might note, oh no, it's got A and B, not U and V. Those are just names. U is like A, V is like B. And so depending on your teacher, in fact, you might see this formula written slightly differently. Not only might they not use A and B, but they might rearrange the factors in the second term. And so your teacher could just as easily say, this is the property, and they would not be wrong. And there's other ways you can write it as well by rearranging the terms in the, the factors in the first term, which I'm not going to go into. The one thing that students sometimes do that you cannot do is you cannot rearrange the terms themselves. So you cannot, for example, do this. That won't work. So the formula I'm going to use here is this one right there. Okay, so it's going to come down to substituting values and simplifying the expression. So we started with this expression right here. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to substitute in our given values right here. Sine of u is 12 over 13, and cosine of v is negative 8 over 17. So I'm going to edit this equation. And first of all, we're not talking about a and b. We're looking at u and v. And so I'm going to substitute in u wherever I see a. 
and V wherever I see B. Second of all, we can now substitute in for sine of U. We know that's 12 over 13. That was a given. And we were also given the cosine of V. The cosine of V was negative 8 over 17. Now we're getting somewhere. I think I'll just edit this. And right? Okay. So now, now we can see where we're going with this. So now we're going to substitute in the values for sine of v, with cosine of u, which, as you recall, I said that you ought to be able to calculate. So the sine of v, I claim, is 15 over 17. And the cosine of u, I claim, is negative 5 over 13. Oops. There we go. And so now... This is looking like a very ordinary arithmetic problem involving an order of operations. So the first thing we can do is we can simplify our we can we can simplify this expression by multiplying our numerators together and our denominators together. We can simplify that expression. And when we do so, what we get is negative 96 over 221 and negative 45 over 221. And with a little further work, we can see we're going to end up with negative 3 over 13. Now I've skipped some steps, some steps along the way on simplifying this expression. Again, if you are not sure about how to simplify the expression, that's another excellent video we can make. Just ask. So that's it. I'm Joe Burke. This was an application of the sum and difference formula. And if you have questions beyond the scope of short videos, please contact your favorite Wisent Math Tutor. Thanks very much. Best wishes.